Hey everybody, welcome back to the Northwoods Family Channel. We are continuing our overlanding adventure with our family of the Black Hills National Forest in our Polaris General 4 1000. If you missed the first part of the video, don't worry, you can always go back and watch it, but we're going to continue on our adventure here after our first night of camping in the Black Hills. We started off on this trip with the goal to make it from Spearfish all the way down to Hot Springs, saw some incredible sights, some awesome wildlife, and just rode some great trails. So we want to share that all with you here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the rest of the videos as they come out. We're launching them one by one, and we spent an entire week here, so we got a lot more ahead for you to watch. Thanks a bunch. Day two of the Black Hills National Forest Overlanding Adventure coming up next. You called it. Dad did get a little chilly last night. You were right. You were warm. You're good. You're a little big. Yeah. yeah. You like your new sleeping bag? Yeah. It's a lot warmer than your old one, so. You guys want it for breakfast, toad in the hole? Sound good? All right, we can do that. Daddy will get started on it. Yeah. I'll make everyone a big cup of coffee. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it didn't get frosted, so it's not that cold, but. We're cooking. We're gonna cook uh, eggies. So what do you guys think of the first night camping? Warm. You thought you stayed warm? Going on. That's not a toad, that's an egg. Yeah. Alright, what do you think of your toad in the hole? Good. Tastes good? Yeah. Yeah. Mmm. You look like you're enjoying that. So Jolene's been mooing. So now all these cows are coming on over here to check us out. <laughs> the entire herd came up here because you were mooing at them. <laughs> <laughs> I love how they're all just staring. You guys don't have to... After we said goodbye to our new friends, it was time to get back to riding and we headed east to finish up the trails on the Victoria ride that we had to backtrack from the day before to find our sleeping bags. We added a lock to our tailgate so we wouldn't lose any more equipment and got to riding. The Victoria ride is an awesome spot with beautiful trails running through pine forests and up and down rocky terrain. We hit trail 6715 which was one of the more challenging trails we rode. It had some good rocks, mud puddles and elevation change. If you're looking for something even more challenging, a short section of trail a couple miles further east, numbered 6705, is listed as extreme. While we weren't in a hurry per se, we decided it would be best to push on northwards to make up for some of the time we lost yesterday while hunting for our sleeping bags.
After we finished up the trails on the Victoria ride we had wanted to run, we jumped on the highway and we headed north past Pactola Reservoir, which is just always a spectacular sight to see. We headed west to a place called Jenny Gulch where we had a picnic launch. Wasn't anything real special there, just kind of a small boat launch and picnic grounds that kayakers and canoeists use to access Pactola. But it was a really convenient place to stop because just to the north was the Pilot Knob Ride, some trails we definitely wanted to check out. Ran off into the deer? to town. Deer van. Deer. Okay. This is nice between the two GPSs. It showed up as Nissan Road on the Polaris uh, right command, but uh, on the Garmin Tread it showed up as 202, which is nice because that's what it because it's got the forestry maps loaded up on it. Okay, so this is Forest Road. 6308 Little loop. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, this one is uh, this one's pretty technical. Yeah. We're kind of like going over ridge tops here too. It's kind of cool. These old forest roads that yep. they made when they were cutting down these massive amounts of trees, but so pretty. It had gotten really hot that afternoon and after finishing up the Knob Hill Ride we were pretty thirsty, pretty tired and in need of some rest and supplies. So one thing about the Black Hills is there are not a lot of places to refuel or resupply or things like that. Especially when you're riding off road you really have to make sure you have fuel and uh, all the gear you need because it is fairly remote. So. We jumped on the highway and we went up to Nemo where we stopped at the Nemo Mercantile and filled up with gas and resupplied for our next couple days. After resting for an hour or so at the Nemo Mercantile, we jumped back on the trails this was part of the Box Elder Forks Trail, which was not very long. It's not a very large trail section, but the trails are very tight, winding, and scenic, going up and down over rocky terrain. How many inches are we? Sixty and a half. Oh, you Holy should be taking this. Are you taking it? Yeah. I am. Ooh. Good thing those side mirrors are high. Wow. I thought we'd have to cross it without any bridge, and I was like, are you nuts? Yep, of course there are cattle grazing here. Ugh. Always cattle. Yeah, and they really make those things horrible. Not good for long wheelbases. Well, they don't want to lose their cattle. I know, they can just make them flat. Navigation, we've got the motor vehicle use maps, which are uh, 
nice. I mean, obviously you can pre-map your routes, see where everything is, but, you know, they don't show everything. They're only so detailed, and, uh, um, and of course, some, sometimes they're a little out of date. Roads exist where they're not shown, or vice versa, so. So we've been relying heavily on the uh, ride command system. So ride command's been pretty good. So far here, it's got a lot of forest roads on here. Um, and uh, ATV routes and stuff like that, but honestly, the Garmin Tread's been fantastic as well. Um, probably even a little bit nicer. Some of the stuff on the Polaris app shows up as like the road name versus the forest road number, which is more helpful to us just because of the maps we're going off of. And I think that's because the Garmin uh, Tread, right? Uh, Garmin Tread has got the Forest Service maps loaded up on it. All right, so we're gonna hang a right now on uh, 152. So anyways, like I was saying, the, uh, the tread has really been working uh, nicely for us on this trip, and honestly having all three of them has really come in handy. Maps, uh, ride command, and the tread. After a full day of riding, we were tired, hot, and covered in dirt. So while I set up the tent, Kim took the kids down to the lake for a dip in the freezing cold mountain water. Now, National Forest campgrounds definitely favor serenity and nature over convenience, so if you travel to the Black Hills, you'll find that none of the National Forest campgrounds have showers. There are a few private and public spots here and there where you can find them, but sometimes a clear lake or a cold mountain stream will be your best bet to freshen up. We found over the years that most campgrounds offer us less solitude than our own property back home, but Lake Roubaix was quiet and there were only a handful of people camping. Plus nothing beats cooking over a campfire, and the kids love them too. So with bands on dispersed camping fires, the campground was really our only option. As much as we like boondocking to get away from everyone else and see new sites, we've generally had good experiences in the National Forest campgrounds. If you are interested in more information about this trip or some of the others we've been on, be sure to check out our website at northwoods.family.